Hi, and as ever, a great big warm welcome to the Ask Sophie podcast. This is, I've just checked, episode 16 of the second season. I can't remember how many were in the first season, so I've got no idea how many I've done, but a few. I, <laughs> You might know that, I forget when it was, but a little while back I started doing as much of a batch recording as I'll probably ever get to, which is two podcasts in a row. So every other Monday, typically, I record those two podcasts. And so I, I do one, and then I go upstairs, I get changed, <laughs> so that it looks like it's next week. And of course, I suppose people do that in TV and film or whatever all the time, but it just feels really funny to be like, I'm back and it's next week, but obviously it's not, it's like... <laughs> 10 minutes later, uh, silly things like that make me laugh for whatever reason. Okay, also, you don't need to know this, but a mini behind the scenes. I look relatively, what's the word, presentable from the waist up, but I'm actually wearing my my workout leggings. I'm not going to show you. You can't see. I probably would if I was on Instagram, but it's just funny again, isn't it, how if I didn't have a big gob, you'd never know that. So I'm going to share love notes in a minute. Uh, today's episode, I haven't given it a title yet, but I think I'm going to call it my favourite questions. Uh, so let's just go with that for now. Um, I've already picked a page, just realised I didn't say that last week, that I'd picked it in advance, but I, I did, uh, of From Love Notes for You. And it's a simple one, but I'm just, just going with this today. Just the one page. Sometimes I think, oh, I'll share another bit because it's not very long. <laughs> it's explaining my thinking to you. <laughs> okay. It's page 117, and it is simply, I am in relentless, loving pursuit of you. I am in relentless, loving pursuit of you. I talked about this last week, aka 10 minutes ago, I think, how the, you know, one of my favourite quotes from Rumi is, what you seek, it's, I can't remember if it's what you seek seeks you or what you are seeking is seeking you but I either way um love that and that what we're looking for this connection ultimately this alignment what we're looking for connection with with alignment with is you know god source higher self whatever you want to call it is seeking that very same thing and such a beautiful powerful notion and truth okay behind the scenes I've just uh oh yeah I was like it's gone out of my head but I realized I've written it down on my notepad I obviously know myself well enough to know that it would go out of my head but yeah basically I don't know if, if you're the same but I'm just gonna be honest December is not my favorite month and the whole Christmas thing, there are aspects to it that I enjoy, like anything in life, everything has wanted and unwanted or what we think of as positive or negative aspects, literally everything. And so, yeah, there are aspects of Christmas that I do like, but what I don't vibe with is just the busyness and the sense of pressure because I am so <laughs> off the scale sensitive to other people's feelings, to the energy of mass consciousness, I can really feel that energy in the air of just this frenetic, frantic craziness, as well as just practical things like, you know, you want to go to the post office and normally it would take two minutes, but because there's a really long queue, it takes much more time and so on and so forth. So yeah, December with with that tension and that pressure and that that the energy that's in the air being there is not my favorite month and actually I really like the sort of back to school time back to work back to reality back to life and so I I way prefer January to December I must be some kind of weirdo I was going to say something else then but I think it's it's gone ah I know what it was I was thinking this this morning as I was driving my kids to school and I was feeling really happy probably a lot happier than them because I I love my work I love a Monday I love what I do and I realize and recognize that I'm really lucky on the one hand I'm lucky at the same time it's is by design it's through the efforts that I've expended and so on and so forth but of course it's true that I don't know you might love your job you might hate it you might um be doing something that's not paid work and enjoy that or not enjoy that whatever but it is absolutely possible and meant to be and divinely ordered for you to 
love what you're doing in life. Like it doesn't make sense to me, not on any day of the week, that God would want you <laughs> to be living a life that sucks. And there are so many paradoxes in, in life in this universe. And one of them is that at the same time, you know, I was talking last week about both, both and energy. At the same time, life is meant to be easy. Life is meant to be blissful. Life is for the joy of it. Life is all about reconnecting with divinity and the bliss and the uh, ecstasy and and the just the 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 joy of that. And at the same time, it does contain within it innate challenges and what we think of as stuff going wrong or we'd call bad because there is this divine purpose to that. I'd call it divine compost. I heard uh, Catherine Zinkina the other day say, polarity creates clarity it's understanding that there's a purpose to all of it so it's, it's both things but I think what happens is we we deem things messing up as wrong and then we get all twirled up and bunched up and peed off and we get caught up in it and it lasts much longer than it than it needs to you know I shared in last week's episode that uh, my sweet cat Susie got put down uh, last week. <laughs> it will be, I guess, a week and a bit uh, from from when this recording goes out. And I was sad. I cried. It was a, it was a sad moment. Uh, but it's like, where's the point in me carrying this grief and this sadness? She's sending me rainbows. She's I don't know reincarnated as a kitten right now or up in cat heaven. Whatever whatever it is. She's not suffering. She's not unhappy. Her soul lives on. There's no, there's a book that uh, I can't think of the name now. There's a, there's a guy called jo- Dr. John Connolly who developed a type of therapy called rapid resolution therapy that I'm just getting to understand a bit about. And he's really cool. It's a bit, it's to me, it smacks very much of, um, hypnosis and, and NLP and the stuff that I was trained on in that you can shift trauma rapidly you don't need to spend weeks and weeks months and months years and years unraveling things and it's a book it's something like your grief is not sacred I think and I haven't read it but what I can imagine from knowing him and and the title is that he's speaking to the fact that it's not helping anyone carrying this grief around with you and of course again if if you, even if you don't believe there's anything after this life, right, even if you just believe that you die and that's the end of you, you wouldn't want people to suffer. I mean, I sometimes jokingly say to my loved ones, oh yeah, I want you to be really upset. I'll be peeved if you're not upset. But obviously, truly, this isn't actually the case. So it doesn't make sense. How on earth did I get talking to this? I have no idea how I got <laughs> You're probably shouting at me, Zofa, you talked about this. I don't know how I got to this. I've been really busier than usual these last couple of weeks because I mentioned last week, and actually this has brought me to the point because I do want to mention it before I get to my questions, uh, that I've been working on this course. Actually, my daughter Yara said to me yesterday, how come you're doing so much work, mummy? And I said, I want to get this course out, sweetie. And so I... At, at the time of this going out, it's probably super imminent that I'm going to be doing a an introductory, a sort of pre-sale to the course, whereby basically you can get access as I roll it out in the next few weeks. You'll have access to the entire course, which will ultimately be priced at £299, but you can access it in the pre-sale at the lowest price it will ever be. Like, I'll never make it this cheap again. It'll be £100. And... As I, you'll, you can access the modules I've created so far. At the time of recording, it's three, but it'll probably be at least four, maybe five by the time I do the pre-sale. But anyway, you'll end up with the entire course. You'll be one of the first to enjoy the practices I share in it. And you'll be able to join the masterclass live that I do that will just answer any other questions you've got. Um, I'll probably, I guess I'll go through, yeah, in fact, I'm almost certain I'll do one of the practices live because I love the potency and the power of that as I said in last week's episode I've never been more excited about anything I've created in my 45 years on this planet apart from my two children of course but in terms of my work and I'm like so obsessed with love notes you probably know that I'm so into the book that I'm writing my membership all these different things but this course is just it's just next level. The, the the content has just been pouring and flowing 
through me. It's a combination of things. I think it's because I've been building up to this my entire life, never mind career, but also all the work I've done on myself and my energy just enables me to really tap into the divine and just bring this through and just thinking about it now it just it just blows my mind anyway again I'm going on and on and on and on and on but dm me email me whatsapp me text me facebook message <laughs> there are so many ways nowadays to get in touch on there um heck send me a snapchat not that I'd probably see it on snapchat but message me either just message the word reframe because the course is going to be called reframe in brackets your life reframe your life or just you can message me anything just say that you want in and I will let you know as soon as that pre-sale comes about and get the link to you to sign up it the content in this course is transformative is life-changing I said this last week it's about as close as you can get to working one-to-one -one with me and there aren't that many coaches who've been in the game as long as me hashtag old but you will benefit from all of that expertise in the recordings anyway enough of that let me get to my favorite or some of my favorite questions so I'm one of those people I remember as a child's age I don't know three four whatever it was starting to ask why <laughs> and you might recognize having done this yourself if you've got a small child in your life or ever have done you probably recognize this but why but why but why well I started asking sorry I'm just adjusting myself here I started asking that question at a very young age and I just never stopped like how does this work why does this happen let me understand more about this and it's just part of my character for whatever reason I love to ask questions to understand to figure things out and of course like I say pretty much every week to ultimately be helpful and of course in, in part, it's true to say that knowledge is power. Ultimately, it's what we do with that knowledge, but it's it's true to a certain degree. So through my 17 years of doing the work that I do, there I've got loads of different tools in my toolkit. Like I'm saying about the, the reframe course, that's what I'm sharing in there because I've picked up so many things, so many things over the years. And questions are some of them, and there are some that I just hold so dear to my heart, and I'm going to share some of them today. The first one, is what would love say? So of course you can use this whenever you're stuck, indecisive, don't know what to do, feel bad about yourself. I did a session for a girl that I know maybe four weeks ago and she's an energy healer. So she really understands, she really feels, she really taps into energy. And <laughs> she's just left me so many messages about how transformative it was, how like it shifted things that she's had years of therapy that haven't shifted and, and this, that and the other. And one of the things that I'd said to her that she's been using that's helped with that transformation is just to ask, how does my divinity feel about this? I used to ask for a long period of time because I go through these phases of like using certain tools and then I'll move on to something else and I'll come back to that or whatever. What does my soul think about this? And it used to be really helpful and really freaking annoying because it would always be like, this is fun. And I'd be like, well, F you, soul, because you're not in here living in this physical world. You just get to be on a metaphorical cloud going, yeah, life is good. But that is the perspective of the soul. Like I've talked about maybe on here before, but in Manifesting Miracles, Seeing the soul energy is like scrappy-doo, like just let me at it. Okay, so this is similar. What would love say or what would love have me do? It could be that, I don't know, say you really don't like your job, but it pays the bills and ultimately you want to leave, but you're worried. Like what would love say? If love was personified, if love just rocked up as a person, what would it say to you? What would it have you do? And it doesn't mean that you have to do exactly that, but use it to as a starting point to think about what you can lean into. Like love might say in that situation, just leave your job and everything's going to be okay. And that might freak you out. Okay, you don't have to go and do that, but you can go, okay, well, that's something that would be really loving. How can I lean into that? Okay, the second one is obsessed with this, or brick incest. Who do I want to be in this situation? who do I want to be in this situation? So when I was getting divorced from my ex-husband, talked about this before, one of my mantras I used, which is a slight aside, but really helpful, I want to share it was, I will make this work for me, okay? There were so many unknowns at that time in terms of where am I going to be able to live? Am I going to be able to get a mortgage? How am I going to be doing financially? Um, 
how is he going to be towards me? So, so many different things. And he was treating me a certain way, which when we, when we focus on the events, the circumstances of our lives that are unwanted, what other people are doing, how other people are treating us that we don't like, we feel disempowered because we are disempowered. This question does the opposite of that. Who do I want to be in this situation? That person might be being what I affectionately like to say a bum hole to me. The, the economy might be working thus. There might be a global pandemic, obviously. If you're listening to this, you have lived through that. But who do I want to be in this situation? My kids are playing up. Who do I want to be? Do I want to be calm? Do I want to be assertive? Do I want to be graceful? Do I want to be confident? Because it just snaps you out of that, oh, this is happening to me, feeling crappy perspective. And I always have a choice perspective. I always get to decide who I'm being, how I'm showing up point of view. So powerful, so empowering. I just use this again and again and again. Okay, I feel like I love each of these babies of mine. (laughs) Just like, I love this one, I love this one. Does this thought feel good to me? Now, this is something that came to me, I can't remember when it was, but years ago in a session with a client. And the challenge is, what I say is that Freud apparently said, although I can't find this written down anywhere, but Freud said, neurosis is your own intelligence used against you. And this so feels like truth to me. And the challenge as I perceive it, that many of us, most of us, all of us actually have in our minds is that, so if you've, if you've brought up kids or been around kids or whatever, they'll get this rash and you'll Google it, uh, you know, like red rash on thigh of three-year-old. And it will say, it's most likely... ABC, you know, they've eaten something that they um, are allergic to, or it's from being in the sun, blah, blah, blah. However, it could be this life threatening thing, in which case get them to the hospital immediately, otherwise they will die. And you're like, oh my God. Uh, It's most likely the fact that they've eaten raspberries, (laughs) whatever it would be, but they could die. So the challenge is, how do we, how do we live without listening to those scary thoughts, but at the same time, being sage, being sensible, not being remiss. And this is the question that cuts through. Does this thought feel good to me? So in that sort of slightly silly, but very common example, the thought of my kid could have meningitis and be about to die doesn't feel good okay so you know that it's coming from fear if your divinity was getting a message through it would say something like look this is i don't know if your divinity would go look but hey <laughs> i'm laughing at hey because i went out with my friend charlie shout out to charlie a few weeks ago and she went hey like <laughs> really sort of like suddenly powerfully and loudly in the middle of conversation. So I keep teasing her about like, hey, hey. And I have um, just said it anyway. It, your divinity would be like, hey, <laughs> but look, hey, whatever. Most likely, and I, and I teach this actually to people who have hypochondria, go with this. The most likely explanation is, okay, but most likely it is an allergic reaction and, and just a rash from the sun or whatever it might be. But it might make sense to just get them checked out. So it's not going to freak you out. It's going to be feel softer and more loving and more kind and more gentle. But it's not going to let you not check something out that could be dangerous. I don't know if that makes sense. But the point is that if we go with thoughts just based on, but they're true or they might be true, then you're ultimately not going to live a happy life because remember what I said about what Freud purportedly said, your neurosis is your own intelligence used against you. The mind per se isn't concerned with you being joyful or, or happy. It's really about life and death and keeping you the same and so on and so forth. And so it, it it's going to use facts and reality and and truth in inverted commas to to keep you the same the way that you can judge is this a thought that I want to believe or buy into is does this thought feel good to me like you're getting on a plane and you're afraid of flying and the mind says we could crash yes true at any point when you get in the car get on a plane go for a walk you could you could crash get run over of course these things are true does it feel good to you 
If it doesn't feel good, you want to pick again. You want to choose again. This for me is the litmus test for is this thought from my divinity or is it from fear? Is it from love or is it from, from the mind? And use this on repeat to cut through the BS. Does it feel good? Not is it true or might it be true, but does this thought feel good? I don't know if I explained that very well. I felt like I kind of went a bit like babbly. So <laughs> what's new? You're probably thinking, yeah, I'm used to it, Sophie. Um, but if I wasn't clear or you've got any questions, be in touch. Uh, oh, yeah. OK, so I think I've shared before somewhere where I first heard this question. I used to be a massive fan of, of Oprah. What did she call it? Was it the Oprah show? I can't even remember now. But watching Oprah, just loved that so much. And there's a bunch of things, actually, that I learned from the school of Oprah and her and uh, Eckhart when they did their can't remember what, like what they called it but like series absolutely was like so in love with that because I adore him adore her anyway she had uh Cindy Crawford on one of her shows and I can't remember what Cindy Crawford was talking about but I do remember this one thing Cindy Crawford said before she got married she was talking to the I can't ever say this word p-a-s-t-o-r the, the pastor Pa past pastor yeah it's, that's just sounds like p-a-s-t-a but you know what i mean p she's talking to the guy that's going to marry them let's just say that and he said hey no just kidding and he said <laughs> good to 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 uh in an attempt to alleviate any anxiety that she was feeling cindy what do you need to hear and i think he explained a bit about this question and how you can use it anytime you're unsure or whatever and it's just a really powerful potent kind of soothing coaching question so I use this again and again in my own life with my clients through my work what do you need to hear I teach this when I'm talking about worry or anxiety and I share this in that section in the reframe course to ask two questions um the other one I'm going to share in a minute but one is this what do I need to hear and ultimately I've said this before but the 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 root the root the journey, the path from anxiety to feeling calm is, is the path of learning to no longer freak yourself out with your thoughts in your own mind. This might happen, that might happen, wouldn't that be terrible? To instead learn how to and practice soothing yourself with your own thoughts. And this question will help you do just that. So the other one that I teach people with worry or anxiety is what might happen instead. And I teach this a lot to kids. So the worry of a child is I'm going to go to bed tonight and a monster is going to jump out from under my bed. And... I don't know, eat me, kill me, attack me, whatever it is. So what might happen instead? There's no monster. I go to bed, I sleep soundly, I wake up in the morning happy. The first thought freaks you out. Second thought is neutral, doesn't freak you out at all. What might happen instead? The other thing that's kind of similar that I learned from Tony Robbins at Unleash the Power Within four years ago, I think it was, coming out to four years, is he said very often... The opposite of what the mind tells you is true is actually true. For example, like mine could say to me now, you're too old to, you know, to be writing a book, to be looking to grow your business. But actually, no, the opposite of that is true. I have so much wisdom and knowledge and expertise now. It's the perfect time. Or you could say to someone else who said, I'm too young. No, you're the perfect age because you're youthful and energetic and enthusiastic. So it's a similar thing but really helpful. And one of the things I've noticed is that, I've talked about this before, I think, I realized a year or two ago that I have been a narcissist magnet. <laughs> I was really averse to the term because it was so, from my perspective, overused. That I would just kind of like pushed it to the side. And then when I listened to a Dr. Ramani podcast, I was like, oh my God, I so needed to know this. And then suddenly realized I have got so many in my life and I've so been a magnet for these people. But because of my experience with the mind and with narcissists, I realized that the mind and narcissists or narcissism have many, if not all traits in common because the mind can be toxic, uh, the inner critic fear, and so, so are narcissists. And typically what a narcissist will do is they will try to invert the truth. I said last week that I was called when I was growing up spoiled a spoiled bitch to be precise but often told that I was spoiled and I see I've got the thank goodness the understanding now that this was an inversion of the truth by that person who was trying to keep me small and I am 
not, I like nice things, but I'm not a uh, spoil. I'm so far from it. And this is what the mind will do. And like I say, it, this is what a narcissist will do. They will invert the truth. So this question, what if the opposite of that is true, is a really helpful, really powerful one. So again, in the program, in Reframe, one of the modules is on identity, is on embodying the kind of like the best version of you. I'm thinking about Oprah again, because she used to talk about, um, what, oh God, it's gone out of my brain now, like be your best self. Uh, I can't even think, but she used to talk about something, something along those lines. So Tony Robbins talks a lot about identity in the James Clear book, uh, Atomic Habits, that name really went out of my head then. He talks about the power of identity. When you're thinking about manifesting, embodiment is key. Like it's sometimes said, you don't manifest what you want, you manifest who you are, or really a reflection of who you are might be a better, a more accurate way of saying it. So embodying the version of you who's living the life that you are dreaming of right now will help to magnetize you to that very existence. So powerful. So one of the questions is, my my thing that, because you, you probably know if you've listened before, that the thing that I am focused on manifesting into my life right now is abundance, is wealth, is financial support and security so that I can show up and be the mum that I want to be for my kids with that taken care of. And so the way that I think about that wealthy version of me is I call her 100 million me. It's not about the specific amount. It's just that that amount works for my subconscious. And so the question I want to share is how would 100 million me, whatever it is for you, how would, you know, in love me or how would uh, happy in their job me, however you'd call it, how would they deal with this? So that's something that I've been practicing for quite a while now. How does she feel about this? How would she respond to that? How would she deal with this? What would she do in this situation? Because that embodiment, that identity piece is massive. It's such a powerful force in your life. So yeah, how would, whatever you call it, how would that version of me deal with this? And I, I, yeah, I just remembered I did a whole podcast on this and I talked about Atomic Habits with James Clear, where I got the idea from, because he shared how a friend of his lost weight by consistently asking the question, what would a, I don't know if she said thin or slim or whatever person do in this situation, which speaks to the power of this. Okay, my final question. I'm not sure I can call it my favorite because they're all so freaking awesome, but I love this one too, is, sorry, just hit the microphone there, is if... I knew that everything was going to be okay, or you could say that I was going to get this thing that I want. How would I feel? Who would I be? What would I do? So I share this a lot with parents, okay? They'll say to me, what do I do when this happens? How do I deal with that? And I'm like, start from here. If if your child came to you and said they didn't want to go to school today, but you knew that you had this image of them, that was crystal clear, grown and happy and healthy and, and living their best life. That's the term I was looking for earlier. Um, how would you feel in that moment? Well, I might, you might feel relaxed, at peace, whatever. Who would you be calm, confident? What would you do? Uh, I would I would sit with them. I would tell them they need to go to school or I, or I would just go, you don't need to go to school. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what you do. It's the energy that you're bringing to it that infuses it, that informs it. That is key, that is fundamental. So the reason this question is so freaking powerful is that typically we're waiting for things to change. Well, I want my child to behave before I can feel relaxed around them. I want to be in my ideal job before I show up in the best possible way. I wanna be in a loving relationship before I really relax, whatever it might be. And you just put yourself in this holding pattern which can continue ad infinitum because the universe can't bring you what's not a match to who you're being. But this, like I was talking about with the last one, with identity and embodiment, shifts you energetically. So really powerful, and particularly if you're a parent who's having challenges with your child, who's worried about them, ask this often, who would I be if I knew they were gonna thrive? How would I feel? 
and then using each situation that crops up, what would I do about this? Be led by that, be informed by that, lean into that, start with that. It will never steer you wrong because you're coming at it from a place of clarity and calm and ease. And this means you have access to your deepest and your highest and your fullest wisdom, which is helpful, full stop, but particularly when you're facing a challenge, which is why worry and stress are so unhelpful. I said to a little girl that I was working with a while back, this really sweet girl, I said in one session, I said, you're only allowed to be anxious if you're being chased by a tiger. <laughs> and of course, I don't mean she can never be anxious, but you, hopefully you get my point. And the next week, she I, I'd forgotten it actually, and she reminded me and I was like, that's so cool because their brains are so sponge like That's why I love working with kids because they're so receptive. When I work with children, the sessions I learned early on were much shorter. And I was like, oh, because they're not arguing. They're like, yeah, I know I'm supposed to feel good. Can you help me? Cool, I'll do that. It's amazing. Anyway, that's a that's a side point. Hopefully those questions help. Let me know your favorite. Please, if you've enjoyed this episode, would you share on social media and tag me? Otherwise, I can't see it. And let me know what your keys kind of nugget or takeaway or favorite question was. Again, if you want the info, if you want to be the first to get the info on Reframe, my third baby, <laughs> be in touch. Failing that, thank you so much for either watching or listening. I feel like I'm getting better at doing that now. Watch, I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> watching or listening. I really appreciate you being on this journey with me because without you, I don't get to help anyone. And you know that that's totally my vibe. I will be back next week. And in the meantime, have a gorgeous rest of your day. And I am sending you heaps of love. Bye for now.